So, good evening and welcome to the um, business presentation. We're going to be talking about the business A-level uh, offered at OLA. And I'm going to start off showing you a very short presentation where I'll cover the content of the course and the way that the course is examined. Uh, then we will have a few minutes for questions and answers, if anyone's got any questions. If we do run out of time, uh, given that these are 10 minute slots, I would just say that I'm very happy to receive emails from anyone, uh, parents and pupils. My email address, lwebster at olab.org.uk. So please feel free to uh, send on any questions you may have by email and I will get back to you that way. But let's start first of all with the PowerPoint. So I'll just share screen with you now and load that. There we go. Hopefully everyone can see that now. So the A-level business course, we use at OLA the AQA specification, the A-level um, course is an AQA exam board. The specification code is on the screen there, 7132. So if anyone wanted to Google the course in order to get much more detail, um, that would take you through, you know, Google search would take you through to the A-level course there where there is, is a fully comprehensive um, you know, detail of the course. What I've done for this evening though, is just highlight, and I'll go to the next slide, the content of both year one, and then we'll look at the content of year two. So just a brief overview of content there. So in year one, we start off at looking at what is meant by a business. Uh, we're looking at the legal structure of businesses there, whether it's sole traders or partnerships, private limited companies, public limited companies. And then we go into looking at management and leadership and the impact that that has on decision making. So management and leadership styles like autocratic leadership or democratic leadership, how that may impact on things like motivation in the workplace. Uh, employee engagement, employee performance, and how that contributes to the overall business performance. Then we move into looking at decision making in the four different functional areas. So this is points three through to point six. So how decisions are made to improve marketing, operational, financial, and human resource performance there. So we're looking at different models. There's a, a degree of uh, numeracy required typically for a business A level, we say a level six, although we have had pupils with level five at GCSE maths, which seems to have worked uh, okay in most cases. But, um, you know, we are looking at things in, in the financial area, such as uh, balance sheets, income statements, profitability analysis, ratio analysis. So it does require a degree of numeracy. So in year two, then we move on to looking at the wider, the more broader aspect of running businesses and looking at the strategic position of a business to begin with. And what that means is understanding the internal uh, strengths of a business and what the internal weaknesses may be. Uh, through things like SWOT analysis. And then we go on to talking about the external environment. So looking at things like the competitive environment, uh, the legal environment, the social and technological, uh, looking at economic factors, you know, how interest rates impact on businesses, how government policy uh, may impact on businesses, you know, obviously things like Brexit come in here and how businesses, you know, need to and are able to respond to those changes. So when we start looking at strategic direction, we're talking about what type of markets are firms going to aim at in order to um, you know, deliver their products and their services to maximize their profits or achieve other objectives, sales revenue, for example. You know, are they going to try to sell more of the same to existing markets or are they going to seek new markets, international markets maybe? product innovation, launching new products. We build into that, you know, links between year one studies when we've looked in marketing at things like product life cycle. 
So we're building essentially on the foundation of the knowledge gained in year one and then tying that knowledge into the wider understanding of, of business strategy in year two. Then when we start talking about strategies, the ways in which firms are going to achieve implementing those strategies, strategic methods, looking at things, for example, like are they going to go with greater internationalization? Are they going to focus more on innovation and how they might respond to you know, the changing environment? Again, bringing in that technical and, and the technological changes, how firms can respond to that. And then in the final part of the course, unit 10, we're looking there at managing strategic change. And that's bearing in mind that the world is a changing environment. The business world changes very rapidly. We know from COVID times uh, how businesses have not been able to rely on their usual strategic methods. Restaurants, for example, have not been able to welcome sit down guests and therefore have had to adapt to takeaway as, as a simple example. So we look at you know how they may respond if they're in international markets to cultural differences, cultural changes. And then we also look at why businesses may fail, what type of challenges they face and what they can do to overcome those sort of challenges. So that's the outline of the year one and the year two subject content at A level. Moving on to the way that the course is assessed, uh, I would point out, first of all, that it is a two year course without any form of coursework or modular work that contributes to the exam. It's all based on final exams at the end of the two years. So there are three papers. Each one is two hours long worth 100 marks and therefore each paper constitutes one third of the A level. Uh, each paper as well assesses content from across the two years of study. So it's not as if we divide year one studies to year one paper. Each paper is across all of the content uh, from the two years of study. But there is a range of examination uh, methodologies. So as you can see here, paper one, we've got multiple choice questions. We've got short answer questions. There may be definition style or calculation type questions. And then in section C and D, there are two essays to be completed, each worth 25 marks. So paper two, just moving on. We have, again, as we've said, two hours, 100 marks, third of the A-level. But here we've got three data response questions. They're relatively short, usually about one side of A4. And then shorter questions made up in three or four parts uh, to each of those case studies. So nine markers, 16 marker type questions, a couple of shorter questions, three and four marks there. And then finally, paper three, Again, two hours, 100 marks, third of the A-level, but this is a much more comprehensive case study. And all of this clearly is compulsory. Each question is compulsory. And in addition to that data and text, which you know students are expected to be able to read through, digest, decipher, uh, analyze, evaluate, then there are six questions attached to that. Again, a few shorter questions and then a couple of longer questions, a 20 mark and a 24 mark question. So essay writing skills is a requirement. Uh, clearly that's something we work on. It's a skill that needs to be developed in the classroom. Uh, I always say no one's born knowing how to do these things. So we do spend time looking at essay writing technique and exam technique in general, uh, in order that pupils are well prepared when they come to their final exams. And exams, you know, or, or homework is based on past exam questions to a large extent. So we are preparing students very carefully week by week to build up to these final assessments at the end. So one last thing for me to say then is in non-COVID times, uh, pre-COVID times, and we hope that given your sons and daughters are currently year 10, sorry, I've just managed to scroll a bit too far down there, uh, that by the time they reach sixth form in about a year and a half from now, we do hope that we will be free of the restrictions that we faced in the last four terms or so. 
uh, assuming that, we'll take a trip to London where we go to the Houses of Parliament. We have also been able to get into the House of Lords in the past, but that was quite lucky. Uh, and also the Bank of England, what we've got down here. Uh, we go to the Museum of the Bank of England, which is rather interesting, plenty on display, lots of thought provoking information there. And then closer to home, I tend to take a trip to the mini plant up in Cowley so that students can see the internal mechanisms of a factory. Um, the body in white, as they call it, is fully automated. So some very sophisticated robotic technology is in there. And then finally, uh, at the Easter before second year exams, we go to the U, um, Tutor to You Grade Booster Workshop. So I will now hand over to any questions, if there are any. But as I said, please do contact me by email if that's preferable. And I will be happy to answer any questions. Okay, I will stop sharing for now and uh, say thank you for attending and I hope I've managed to give you a, a substantial overview, brief overview of the course and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye for now. <laughs>